the book of Job was written to prove to every angel, to prove to Satan and every child of God that man and women are capable of loving God without an exterior motive. So praise God. Um, uh, thank you, everyone that worked at the fireworks booth and helped out. Yes. So thank you so much. And they cleared $4,900. Hallelujah. So they cleared that. And um, it's a lot of hard work, but a lot of fun, a lot of sweating, everything. So uh, thank you so much for that. And then July 29th is our next event. It's the fourth Saturday of the month, and it is taking place at the Sportsman Manor. So we're going to be doing that. Hallelujah. So we can reach the community for Jesus. Amen? Because the harvest is great. So praise the Lord. And we have Vacation Bible School coming up. Whoop, whoop. Can you guys do that? Whoop, whoop. Oh, come on. Whoop, whoop. There you go. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Um, I have something really, really great to tell you. But, oh, wow. What is this? Whoa. Whoa. Oh, sorry. I got distracted. All right. You guys, um, this is something I've been waiting all... Wait a minute. What is this thing? Sorry. I don't mean to get distracted. Hey. What's up? My brother. How you doing? With your hammer. Oh, yeah. You know what to do with all this stuff. Uh, you know how to put it together. You're an expert. Well, I am an expert. Yes. Yeah, I'm trying to make something. You are? Yeah. It's going to be great, and it's going to do great things. It's going to be great. Yeah, I'm pumped. And I'm it's pumped. going to do great things. Absolutely. All right. Yep. What is it? Haven't figured it out yet. <laughs> but, but, it's going to be great. And it's going to do great things. Great things. Yeah. All right. Yeah. You know what? Huh. Just because of that very thing, you just volunteered yourself for Vacation Bible School. Volunteered? Yeah. Volunteered? Right. Because you're going to make something. You're going to create something. You have that creative, ooh, all about you. Yeah, that's, that's, that's true. That's, that's true. right. Okay. You okay. know what? You're going to be able to fit right in because God has made you with so many talents so many things he created just for you to be just the way you are. And we're going to take this vacation Bible school, and we're going to go out to Boulder Highway, and we're going to bring kids in here to this place. Hey, to hey, hey, are there going to be fun games, you know, like getting up and moving and jumping around and all that stuff? Yes, 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 yes. There will be lots of fun games. But I want you to know that we're taking a van out to all of the Southeast Area Command, and we're going to bring the kids in here right to this place. Hey, I got a question. Like, are they going to be, like, making, like, gizmos and gadgets and, and taking them home and playing with them and stuff like that? Yes, okay. yes, okay. yes. Okay. They're going to make gizmos and gadgets. But I want you to know we're even taking flyers to the Boulder Suites. And families there have been excited about coming here and bringing their children here. I, I, I'm sorry. I, I just got one more question. Are there going to be lip-smacking snacks too? Yes, there will be lip-smacking snacks. And Bible games. Woo! And fun songs to sing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. What are you, what are you, what are you doing? What are you... Yeah. Now, just like I said, there are all kind of things that God made you to be able to fit into this place. And God is going to speak to the children that are coming here. Jesus is going to meet them in a whole new way that he never has before. He has such a plan for them. He's going to speak his word into them. And just like I told you before, you have so many talents in you that God has given to you. We're going to find a, a, a way in this book right here okay. where you can plug in. Plug a in. place where you can plug in. That's right. Uh, like, like plug in? Like... Plugging well, this into well, something? No, wait a minute. Don't, I wouldn't do that if I were you. But you said plug in. Well, yeah, I did, but I didn't mean for, for you to actually... You said plug in, so I'm going to plug it in. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Ooh. Uh, Sorry. Uh, 
Sorry, guys. Okay. You should find a flashlight or something. I should. I should have known where it was before the lights went out. Wait a minute. Is that it? No, that's, no, that's not it. Come on, man. Wait, the people wait, are wait. waiting. Oh, oh, there it is. There it is. Don't flash any mic. Oh, sorry. So anyway, Hello. you guys come by the registration table right after church and register your children to, to go to the Vacation Bible School. Also, if anyone wants to buy a voucher to pay for a child that can't afford it, those are available too. And we have a materials list for you if you have anything you want to lend or donate for the materials for the Vacation Bible School. The kids are going to have so much fun. So we'll see you right after service at the registration table. God bless you and have fun today in church. Bye, guys. Bye. When is Vacation Bible School? Next Monday, July 17th. July 17th through the... Okay. Through the 21st. Through the 21st. All right. Pastor Tony. All right. <laughs> Lip smack and snacks. Oh, yeah. We're going to have our offering right now. If we have the ushers come forward, please. Come on down. Praise God. So, um, I have a scripture for you. And I don't think that one's it, but that's okay. I've got it right here. Basically, it talks about in Joshua 6.19, talks about all the treasury will go into, um, all the gold will go into God's treasury. And it was consecrated unto the Lord. Right now, you're giving some of your gold. You're giving some your monies to the treasury of the Lord. You're consecrating it to him. And it goes into God's treasury. What does that mean? When you dedicate something to God, it goes into his treasury. God treasures what we give to him. All it takes is consecration. All it takes is a dedication saying, it's not mine anymore, Lord, it's yours. It's a small amount, but, you know, I can't fund the whole ministry, but I can be a part of the treasury that funds everything. Praise God. Lord, we thank you for giving us the ability to give and to consecrate to you, Lord God. And we thank you that you take care of it and reward it like nobody can. You take the little and make it much. In Jesus' name, amen? Amen. God's servant, Pastor Jose. Good morning, guys. Um, I have to give a report on what you have done and what you are doing. You know, for the last four weeks, I've been saying that I waited for you all of my life, and I've pastored for a long time. I was an evangelist before I was a pastor. Uh, before I was an evangelist, I was a youth pastor. Um, I've cleaned plenty of toilets in the house of God. Pretty much done it all. But I have never, um, and I'm either lying to you or I'm telling you the truth, I've never been around a group of people like you guys. In, uh, here's the proof. Here's the proof. I'm going to just have a little heart-to-heart -heart talk with you guys. Because we are in the middle of an amazing move of God. Amazing move of God. Um... God has been healing people. Miracles have been happening for the last three weeks. And everybody knows that a personality or a man or a group of people cannot do that. It has to be God. Um, Joanna came to me before services and this is, I believe, a couple of days before services. 
And she said, you know, I've never seen a real miracle, you know. I mean, you know, like a leg grow out. And I heard that. And then two days later, we were here. And, um, you know, I, I asked if there's anybody that had a leg that was shorter than the other. And we had somebody come up. And we asked several people to come up. And, um, you know, I don't like embarrassing people and stuff, but this individual came up and we asked for different people to come up and, you know, Joanna saw the leg grow. And Joanna is really, uh, she could have been a detective. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? She's not the type, I mean, she just really checks things out and so forth. And, I mean, she's really excited that the Lord would hear that. But, um, you know, they just recently went through something, uh, a battle. And, you know, it wasn't a, a one-week battle. It took a little while. So God granted Joanna that, but uh, Joe, I wasn't even thinking about you. Maybe I should have been, but I was just spending some time, you know, with the Lord. And I'm kind of funny. When I spend time with the Lord, I kind of make a presentation of what I, you know, about things and so forth. And pretty much he'll say no or yes. You ever make presentation to God? What do you think about this? You know, da, da, da. But uh, all of a sudden, Joe, you came to my mind, and it was like, what have you seen through this whole thing? So she got her gift, and this is your gift. The Lord said, I want you to honor Joe in front of the whole congregation. And the way that you dealt with the whole situation was uh, truly amazing. You know, a couple of times... I said, my gosh, you know, you're handling this in such a godly way. So I believe that the Lord told me that you were to be honored. The Bible says to honor to whom honor is due. And um, Joe, I really saw a man of God. You know? I didn't see a Bible banger. I didn't see somebody quoting scriptures. I just saw a man of God. The stability, you know, the stability that you brought to your home, to your wife. You know? It's like watching an anchor. And uh, I'm telling you, you got an A plus. I, I know that we don't give ourselves A pluses. You know? Um, but God is easier to please than man. Jesus was able to please God, but he wasn't able to please man, and they crucified him. So I just wanted to do that. You. you know, you are a man of God. Oh. 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 Glory to God. This is what you have done. You know, nowadays, we have to be careful because it's true that we've been saved by grace, and it's true that Jesus paid it all, but it's also true that the church is supposed to be, and what I mean the church, I mean you guys, I've never seen this building go out and get anybody saved and lead them, in, you know, lead them to Christ. But this is what you have done. As you know, the statistics have changed in our area command. You know, we work with Metro's, uh, one of the area commands. And you're the one that's been doing this. But I want to give you a little report on the last four. This is basically four months. 
And these are true, hardcore numbers. Are you ready? You have given out 34 tons of food, actually over 34 tons of food in four months. That's working in cooperation with uh, three square meals. You and the officers have passed out, and I want to repeat that number. I was shocked. 34, over 34 tons. And I want you to look at the size that you are. You remind me of the 300 men that fought with Gideon. That's 34 tons or 68,231 pounds of food. That's incredible. How many people receive food, food these, you know, signed in, address? the people in the family, this and that. 2,419. <clears throat> if you were here last Sunday, and if you weren't, we had a video of a man, and it's funny, but it's sad. And he actually said, we're so guys you guys are here. That was the officers and us. Because we're tired of going to the store and stealing food. Those were the numbers for individuals, 2,419 but they live in families. So if you want to say how many families, it was 662 families. Once again, I want you to look at the size of this church. You did that. This is what I tell the captain, I tell the lieutenant. I go, I don't do this stuff. They do this stuff. You know, the suite that's given us an, an apartment that we can conduct our operations in that neighborhood. And you remember when we first started, we went to Metro and we said, what are the worst areas that you have in this area command? And those are the areas that you took on. You're powerful. The stats have dropped. Got a report. Uh, it was last week that they even had dropped even lower. I don't even know what the new ones are. But something is happening. And between the ages of zero to seventeen, that's in the twenty. You know, the twenty-four hundred and nineteen. One thousand fifteen were seventeen and under. 1,233 were from 18 to 59, and 60 on up, uh, 161 people. For you visitors that are here, I, I want you to know something, and that this is not a, a spiritual slave camp. How many of you have ever been to a spiritual slave camp? With, you know, where you have families breaking up because this church has got people doing so many things. 
and, and you feel like you need to do it, you know, if you, because you've got to be part of the, of the club. I, I want you to know that I know that you guys have done this out of your heart because everybody's so happy. You, you cannot be doing this for any other reason. It has to be because you have a love for God and you have a love for other people or you wouldn't be so happy. You are amazing, and I know that you guys have put a smile on God's face. And we give him all the glory, all the praises. It's just, you know, I'm serious. In all my years of pastoring, I've never, ever, 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 I have ran into a group of people like you. So I want you to look at one another. Just kind of look around. Look at people's faces. If you have to turn around, look at the people and, you know, towards the back. And you're looking at the living church of Jesus Christ, the son of the living God. This next event it's going to be on the 29th. We just had an additional source in after church uh, you know we have a meeting for the intercessors because we're going to double up on prayer. What do you mean? Things are going great. They're going to be greater. How many of you know that you can be on the boat with Jesus and think it stop a storm, but you can go a little deeper than that and take a walk on the ocean with him? And so many toys and so many things, these are new things, have been donated that we need some volunteers after church, to sort it out. It's not going to take long. What, what do you think, Jesse? An hour top? Of course, it depends on how many people. You know, if we get what? If we get eight people? Half hour, if it's eight people. Uh, we're going to have feminine hygiene, toys. I mean, it, you know. God just opened up this blessing, and these people are going to be doing this every month. There's going, to, uh, there's going to be so many nonprofits that are going to be with us in this next outreach. Uh, I think it'll probably be the biggest one we've done. Um, you know, the new ministry for the, uh, for the ladies that are coming out of prostitution. Um, it's, it's just awesome. And I just want to encourage you, if you're not doing anything, I want you to be a part. You know, this is, this is a place where We, we don't want any members. We want family. So there's so much to do. That's not all. How many of you know the church is always praying for prayer to get back into school? You know, I've learned one thing from God that I have to be careful what I pray for because I'll end up getting involved in it. You end up praying for the food for the poor. Guess what? You're going to find yourself passing out food. And, and I, I caught that when I was a young Christian. You know, I would pray simple little prayers about things and guess what? I would find myself doing it. 
And it was like God would go, well, since you're so interested in this, <laughs> and you're bringing the request up to me, how about you doing it? That started with a French ministry, the toilette. You know, you come out of the Marine Corps, when you use a toilet in the Marine Corps, the latrine, let me tell you something, it looks like a piece of jewelry that's being sold at a fancy store. In the Marine Corps, you have beautiful bathrooms. And I go to the church and I look at the bathrooms and I was up to the Marine Corps standards and I went, who is cleaning these toilets? <laughs> you know, they need to go on KP. <laughs> they need to be disciplined. I walk out of the bathroom. The Lord says, I found myself cleaning the toilets. <laughs> Pastor come up to me and said, you know, these bathrooms have never been so clean. You know, I want to thank you for doing that. And every young man wanted to get behind that pulpit on Sunday. I didn't know that that was the key to the podium, the toilet. <laughs> the pastor looked at me and he said, if you ever get a true word from God, you let me know and you'll be able to minister on Sunday. I went... Pastor, I think I just had a heart attack. I didn't understand what you were saying. I said, and I didn't know that the way to the podium was through the, the toilet. So pray about this. Are you ready? Prayer back in school. Well, what if it was greater than just prayer? You know, we partnership with the Good News Club. They have an emergency on 29 schools that the gospel is being ministered at inside the building on school property. Fourteen of them, they already have the Good News Club going on in them, but 14 of them need teachers. And I know there's no way we're going to be able to meet all this need, but I'm just trying to bring it across to you that God has done his part in opening doors, and now all the different churches here in Las Vegas need to get off their butts. Did I say that? Yes, you did, Jose. Okay. Okay. That's 14 that have existing Bible clubs going on. Good news. Uh, uh, not Bible clubs, excuse me. Good news. To be able to, without pulling any punches about Jesus, reaching their family, the whole deal. How is this possible? God. And then there's 15 schools. Another 15 Schools. It was, uh, it was a total of 54 schools, but we have 14 that need people. And you, know, I'm telling you, the training is so easy. But we have an additional 15 schools. Some of them already have Bible clubs, uh, excuse me, good news clubs in them, but they don't have anybody. So when school starts again, we don't want doors that are open to close. Because, see, the fields are white, but the laborers are few. So we have 15. Some of them are, they have no people to conduct it. And then we have like a little over 50% of them 
that they have asked. I want you to listen to this. They have asked for the Good News Club to come in and tell the kids. The doors are open. Do you understand why Jesus said, the fields are white, but the laborers are few? It is about time for the church. They called us on emergency. They send us texts. Please pray for this. I'm going to be contacting other churches, other pastors. You know, it's a funny thing about me. When I have contact with people, they either like me or they don't like me. There's no in between. <laughs> These doors are open. Do you want them shut? Pray for grace. Because <laughs> when I see a need, now I'm going to tell you, I didn't know about this need till this morning when I read the text. This is an emergency. But last night I had a really funny dream. My wife, the one that always, God deals with her through dreams, me. I'll eat my taco or my apple pie and I'll go out and I wake up and it's like I turn into a piece of concrete. <laughs> And the piece of concrete wakes up and starts thinking again. But I had this dream last night. Before I read this emergency. And there was a little boy. And he was a peculiar little boy in this dream. Because he had snow white hair. And I'm going. A little child. With snow white hair. And this little child came up to me and said, I have no one that really cares about me. Will you adopt me? And in the dream, the little child could read my mind. I couldn't hide my thoughts. And in my mind, I said, I'm 66 years old. We're doing so much right now. And we have so many things I have so many things going on personally that I can't, I, I can't raise a child. And that's when I found out he could read my mind. And he looked up at me with that snow white hair and he said, I have no one. I have no one. Please adopt me. Take care of me. And I woke up. I get up, walk into my office at home. I'm going to check, check my, oh, I have some emails here. And I start to read it. And it was this need. I believe God was getting my heart ready. Do you know that this church was born out of a children's program? We were children's program for 12 years. Halfway houses are great. We were not a halfway house. We were a program. And God, they came to us and they said, I'll never forget this. They said, they looked at me and said, well, you, you know, families. Some of the families said, will you be our pastor? And I said, no. I like the boys, you know, this children's program. Boys live there. But on the weekends, girls would come in. And of course, they were separated. We had electric fences and guard dogs. No. And I said, no. And then my wife came and she says, really? She says, I didn't know that you were God. I'll never forget that. And I looked at her and she said, what do you mean? I looked at my wife. What do you mean by that? And I said, well, have you prayed about what they asked? No. I don't need to pray about it. I wanted nothing to do with church. I had had it with church. I was happy in an island called Nirvana Children's Program. I would always say, kids are so easy to deal with. I don't ever want to be a pastor. 
right? And because of the kids and the families, we started a church. And here we are. It's a total of 29 schools that are in crisis. You don't have to pray for the doors to open. The doors are open. How many of you have Christian friends that do not go to this church? Of course you do. I want you to recruit. I want you to text... Send paper airplanes. Talk to every Christian you know. The office is open four days a week here. From nine in the morning till two in the afternoon. Will you reach out to your Christian friends? Twenty-nine schools that the doors are open. If you look at the material, you know who's on the front of the page, the first page? Jesus with children all around him. This is not a, a watered-down little program. This is hardcore. So why do we want to grow? Do we want to grow because we want to be a big church? Have you ever asked God the reason for a mega church? What is the reason for a mega church? You know what the real reason should be? Our area command has over 150,000 people. That's just one area command. You know what a mega church is for? Look at what you're doing. You already changed the stats in that area with the officers. I, I mean, it's not supposed to happen so quickly. What's, it's not, but you, this small group has done it because of Jesus. Now, I want you to imagine... If we had a thousand people hitting our area command, if just a small group like this with the officers can do what is happening, imagine, and I'm just going to talk like the Marine Corps, what would 1,000 hardcore, battle hardened Christians? could do to the kingdom of darkness. Because I asked the Lord, what does it make a church for? You know how a church is usually built? A lot of, some churches are built nowadays. You do a survey on an area and you find out the income. I've sat in classes where I had to bite my tongue. And then you find out the income of the area and, and this and that. And, and what about fasting and praying and seeking God where he wants you? And of course, it has to be in a decent place where you buy your property. Well, I got news for the devil. We're not doing it like that. We're going to go to the hardcore places and people are going to be shocked at what God can do. I'm tired of nursery churches. We used to be one. 
But it's this one black brother in L.A. before I was saved used to say, but not no more. <laughs> You're an amazing group of people. But you can reproduce yourself. And you can be proof producers. When I was in the motorcycle gangs, we used to own turf. It was our turf. You came on our turf, that's how we did all our evil. You didn't come into our turf. It was our fire hydrant. The Church of Jesus Christ needs to have the same attitude. This is our area command. And we will not tolerate the works of darkness ruling. Period. I get upset when I find out a crime has happened in our area. I mean, I get upset. It bothers me. That tells me that I own it. We need to own it. And you'd be surprised what will happen in your own personal life. The transformation. You have the spirit of 300 men that fought with Gideon. I know you do. You're not looking to get it. You've got it. I said, you have the spirit of the 300 men that fought with Gideon. They were some bad mama jamas. They were sheep with canines. Now let's get on with our message and we'll have you out of here in a short time. Amen? We've been on this series, Have You Considered My Servant Job? Not Satan. Because originally God said this, this is Satan. But have we considered, has the church considered my servant Job? The book of Job is a book that is the least read book out of all the books in the Bible. All you have to do is go into the commentaries and start studying this and that. And you're going to find out that it's not quoted as much as all the other books. It scares Christians. But it scares the devil more. And we have misunderstood the book of Job. Now, I want you to listen to this. See the little green sea there? Job was able to withstand the full hand of Satan, touching him because Job had been first, guess what? Touched by the hand of God. By the hand of God. Once the hand of God touches something, it'll never be the same. I want you to know this, and I'm speaking to God's army. You know what the Lord is asking us to do? To build him an army, not a nursery. Build me an army. Satan's touch on your life, and how many of you know that you have fought with him? If the Bible says that we don't wrestle, we do not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against powers and principality, that means that there's contact. But 
Let me tell you what the difference is. On a child of God, Satan's touch is only temporary. But God's touch is eternal. The trials and testings are temporary. But the touch that God has in your life will last through eternity, neons of time, and you will never, ever be the same. The Word of God says that death and hell will be this, my God. Do you know what the Bible says? It says that the last enemy that will be destroyed will be death. Death won't be able to touch. Why? Because it's temporary. Brother Jose, the stuff that I'm going through... How can you make that statement? Do you know what I'm going through? Notice what just came out of your mouth. I'm going through. We, as a church, the church of the living God is moving to a new phase, and it's this. We're not going to be praying and having the attitude that God can keep us from the fire. We're going to have the attitude and the anointing because we have the same God as the three Hebrew children had. Our God... It is able to keep us in the fire. And if he doesn't, you can't threaten me with heaven. Now I'm just taking the mask off. Do you know how many people I've talked to? Well, pastor, you keep this up and, and I'm going to quit tithing. They're no longer here. That's the wrong line. But we don't need your tithing anyway. Don't you know that we've never had a building fund? We've never asked for a penny. And we own our property in the building lock, stock, and barrel without begging for money. Or scams. Do you know how we did it honey? <clears throat> we entered into a covenant. Where every time we would see a penny. We'd pick it up and we'd go. Thank you for providing. For the new building. And the property. How many of you have ever been asked. Or were asked. In any phase. Of the building. Here and so forth. For a penny. Raise your hands. How many hands do you see? No one was ever asked for a penny for the building program. And I said, God, why do I have, why do we have to be the ones that do it like this? And the girl says, because you need to be an example. It's hard on your flesh when God says you're the example. Isn't it? But here we are. How many of you haven't asked for a penny for the next building? Raise your hands. Not one. Do you know that we have 80%? Because we're going for cash. How 
How many of you have come from churches where five offerings have been taken during one service? Raise your hands. You know what that tells you? A lot. How about three offerings in one service? Oh, God can do anything and so forth. So we'll receive five offerings this Sunday. You lying hypocrite. You have no faith. Did he just say that? I sure did. God can do it. One Sahana God touches you like a touch Job. You'll never be the same. Then Job rose. He just lost everything. He lost everything. But his body had not been touched yet. That was the second phase. And Job rose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell down upon the ground and worshiped. Do you want a miracle, Sally? Can I challenge you? I know the miracle you want. Will you come here and lay down before the presence of God and say, I don't care what anybody thinks. I'm going to worship you in spite of all of this stuff. What are you doing? You're trying to make a scene? Oh, no. You haven't seen the miracles I've seen God do. When God's people are going through things and nobody but God can do it. She will get her miracle. I don't care what hell, death, and the grave says. What do you think we came to church to do? Patty cake, patty. It's going to take more than patty cake to reach a city Jesus looked over the city of Jerusalem and he wept you want to know what to do when you lose everything you know what the answer is you fall down and you worship you worship him with your need. When you worship God with your need, the problem becomes worship. God changes its name to worship. And your angels will say, this is no longer a problem. This is worship. This is worship. Worship defies 
everything that is evil. Faith looks down and says, there's worship, I'm on my way. Heaven is moved by worship. You'll have to forgive me. I had a, I had a pastor friend of mine that the congregation threw him out because he wept too much. I told him, praise God. God has set you free. <laughs> Can you imagine that? He would go to preach and he would weep. Now I want you to listen closely to this. This is 1 Peter 4.16. Yet, if any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed. Do you know why people go to church and they pretend like everything is fine and hunk a door? It's not because they're full of faith. It's not because they're worshiping. Some people... Put on an act because in some circles you're not right with God if you're going through something. You must be in sin. There must be something wrong with you. The main thing Job was accused of is there's something wrong with you. And it has kept the worship and the praise and the victory out of the family of God. Don't you ever be ashamed when you're going through something. You are not a second rate citizen. This needs to be an atmosphere that when you're going through something, you can go to somebody and say, pray with me, I'm going through hell. Notice the word, I'm going through. Brother Peter knew about this, didn't he? But if any man suffer, that's anyone, as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God. On his behalf, like Job did. I'm going to tell you something. There is no one or anything that can point the finger of judgment at any of God's true children. The blood of Jesus destroys the judgment. Have you ever been judged? The next time somebody is judging you when you're going through something, look at them right in the face and say, I worship God. Right now in the middle of this, I worship Him. I worship you, Lord. Start having a hallelujah party right in front of their face. It might set them free. I'm serious. The anointing might just hit them. Now, if you're really wild, if you come from a Pentecostal background, or you know how Pentecostals are. They'll just fall right in the middle of the street on the floor. <laughs> Go find a chandelier to swing from or something. We that come from a Catholic background... We're a little bit more mellow until <laughs> something happens that just gets you going wild. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Don't be ashamed. Be set free. When you're going through a battle, worship Him. Don't be ashamed. When you're driving that car that you don't know if it's going to make it to the 7-Eleven, worship Him. Don't be embarrassed of your car. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I've had to do it. Look at him driving that 75. What a $75 car looks like. It looked like it went through hell. <laughs> but it's still ticking. I know. $75 car. Hallelujah. It used to, that spring used to poke me right in the kidney area. I had a big old towel stuffed in that hole. The last time I drove that car, it, it hit me right in that, and I was about to cuss. And I grabbed that thing when I said, oh, I praise you, God. I thank you for this car that works every once in a while. You know what kind of car I drove before that one? A custom Corvette. God was blessing me. I got proud. And driving on the street, I said, I'm going to go to Italy and I'm going to get me a real car. This isn't a real car. God had blessed me. Within a very short time, I was driving a $75 car. From custom Corvette to $75 Ford Falcon. Remember the Falcon? I thank God for that car. And I said, I've learned my lesson. I was proud, arrogant. See, repenting is good. I drove down about a block and a half. This Corvette passed, passed by. Beautiful white Corvette. The Lord spoke to me. The Lord said, that's your next car. I said, I didn't believe it. Two weeks later, I saw a Corvette for sale. God had blessed me within two weeks. How does he do that stuff? I found one. Guess what? This is when you used to find stuff in the newspaper, not the internet. I called the phone number. I want to come over, look at the car. Guess how far the car was from me? Three blocks. It was the same exact car. And you know what I did with that new car? I was a good boy. I was a good boy. Ooh, I would thank God for it. It starts. Oh, hallelujah. You ever had your friends call your friends because you break down so much that even your Christian friends go, oh, no. And you could tell he's broken down somewhere again. Again. Last verse, 1 Peter 4, 19, same chapter. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls. What happens when you're suffering? This is what you do. Last verse on the first page. Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in what? Keep on well-doing. Whatever you're doing, don't stop.
Don't stop. Don't be ashamed. Hallelujah. Brothers, sisters, I came to church because I need prayer. Let's pray. Instead of being ashamed. But you keep on. Commit to the will. Therefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well doing. That's the secret. Well doing. I keep on doing it. See, Sally, that's why you take care of that little girl. Like she came right out of you. You don't stop. You don't stop. You can't stop me in the name of Jesus. My God, my God. Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well doing unto a faithful what? Creator. God is faithful. Hallelujah. Are you kidding? Don't you know that you're sitting next to a cork? What does that mean? You ever try to get a cork? Hold it under water. As soon as you let go, it pops right up to the top. Comes right up to the top. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. People of God. The book of Job was written to prove to every angel, to prove to Satan and every child of God that man and women are capable of loving God without an exterior motive. Don't you ever forget that. God created you with a free will Hallelujah. And you, 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 I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about you. You got the right stuff. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Not by myself, but with him. I wonder if God has healed somebody doing the service. It's a wonder. I want you to check your bodies and let's see. You know, God never asked my permission to do anything. I don't know if you I don't know if you've experienced that. He just does stuff. As a matter of fact, he doesn't even ask you permission to bless you. He doesn't ask you permission if he could, you could be tested to try. I like it like that. Check your bodies. Let's see if he's healed anybody. If you need to stand up and do the hokey pokey and turn yourself around. Some of the stuff we used to do in the world, huh? Well, we, we might do the hokey pokey next week. Who knows? So you've all checked your bodies. I just want to see. Last week, I don't know how many people got healed. I... It was like five or six or seven. I don't know. 
okay, is there anybody that came in with something to, to service and you don't have it no more? Okay, let's get the microphone over there. And then, hallelujah. Yeah. Then first, second. I came in with my husband and now I don't have him no more. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I had a big... She's a comedian. I, no, I mean for real. Not, you know. I had a big pain in the neck and seriously, no, I did. And now I don't. It's gone. Glory. I was an addict, you know. How, how long have you, how long did you have the pain in the neck? Um, about two years, no. <laughs> no, I, it's, it's off and on, but it was really bad this morning, and he was trying to pinch it while I was sitting here, and I went and I worshipped, and it's gone. It happened when you went and worshipped? Yes. Oh, praise God. Is that why you went and worshipped? No. no? I well, don't tell us. I know. We don't want to too private. <laughs> yeah, because you know I will. <laughs> Hallelujah. So it left when she went and worshipped. I guess we're going to have to give God the glory then. Hallelujah. Uh, we have one more back here, Romeo. Now, a lot of times when God touches people, somebody else will get touched as the testimony is going forth. I'm standing up in the need of prayer for my husband. He just went to the hospital. All right. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We call on Dr. Jesus. Touch him, Lord, for your glory. Lord, we promise we will give you the glory. Not any person. Body, shape yourself to the word of God. And the word of God says, by whose stripes you are healed. So obey the word of God. The Bible says... He sent his, forth, his word forth, and he healed them. We send the word forth in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Did you have your hand up, sir? Okay, praise God. Let's see what our brother has to say. I came in, uh, in need of a new church home this morning, and I'm... Um, leaving with uh, that I found it. Praise God, bro. Praise God. Yes, sir. Well, I got a few ones. Like a few weeks ago, I was using the circular saw, and I, I, I downplay everything to my wife. I don't tell her how bad anything is. Well, I, I had a piece of wood. It was the, the Saturday before, you know, Saturday before. A piece of wood shot in my eye. I mean, it was, it was a good-sized piece. And what was it, middle song service? I looked over at her. I went like this. This big hunk of wood came out of my eye. I mean, it was, it, it, it was large. The week before last. But right now... I da another downplay was my my shoulder, and she knows because it takes a lot of pain for me to complain. Well, I was getting scared I was going to have to get surgery. I can clap my hands. Last week I was clapping, and it hurt so bad I had to stop. And that that's just like, you know, I mean, the, the amount of pain <laughs> and the thought of going through surgery just... And everybody told me, you're going to have to get surgery. I said, no, I'm not. No, I'm not. I have no pain right now. Can you very carefully do something? Now. I'm going to tell you guys something. We have to give God the glory. We worship you. 
we worship you. How many of you know that we're just all, we're all God's people? There's no big shot here except King Jesus. Don't you love him? This is a strange place to come. <laughs> it's going to get weirder. Um, so er, earlier this week, I got a, had a pinch nerve uh, in my back, and for some reason, it's gone this morning. But I'm also here because I needed um, some help. I'm praying for my daughter, um, who's um, going through a lot. And so that's why I come to um, ask for some help today. And I hope you guys will help me pray for her. So if you could please. Um, her name is Monica. Monica. Can some of you women go right now? Just let the love of God move through you. I guarantee you. Things are going to happen. See, Darla, that's where you belong. Walking across, hallelujah, to go pray for somebody. Hallelujah. Making a joke out of the devil, Darla. He's here, you know. He's here. That's what it's all about. If he doesn't show up, then we just had a nice little religious service. But he's here. The master is here. He is here. He is here. He is here. To do a wonder in this place. He is here. He is here. He is here. To do a wonder.